What's up, everyone? How you doing? It's Jason. And I'm uh, Peter. We're at Atifio on Tech today. It is the 12th of July. Special guest today, Mr. Peter Ross, VP of Marketing here at Actifio. Jay is actually watching live, I think, right now, because he just messaged me on the computer. But he is heading away to a fancy uh, European cruise. So he'll be out for this week and probably next week as well. So we'll probably have a special guest next week, too. Um, we'll miss him. You'll miss him. I will miss him. Uh, yeah. But have a great vacation, Jay. Yeah. Have fun, Jay. You deserve it. Um, so... It's Beer Car Thursday. Engineering just walked, came by with some awesome beers. They actually spoiled us with a little Treehouse Curiosity 50. Hot off the off the line, just came out today. Uh, if you don't know about Treehouse Curiosity series, it says she is their um, experimental blend. Uh, you know, they get to do some different things with beers they traditionally do. Some of them have actually been formed, kind of out as real beers. So the Bright series, we're gonna have one of those today, was actually originally a Curiosity beer. So. Congrats to Treehouse on their 50th Curiosity. Um, and Trillium has their own experimental series called Permutation, so they're battling back and forth. They're at, like, number 53 now, so they're wow. kind of going head-to-head -head there, a little Massachusetts brewery. I'm getting going an education, on. Jason. Thank you. Well, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you being here. Anytime. So before we start, as always, we pick out a beer. So once again, hot off the presses, this is Bright with Galaxy. So the Bright series from Treehouse started off as just Bright. But now they've expanded to add different hops. There's a Bright with Galaxy, Bright with Citra, Bright with Simcoe and Amarillo, blah, 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 etc. So today, we're going to do Bright with Galaxy. Love it. Galaxy, an Australian hop. A little bit of a bite to it. We'll see how you like it. Appreciate it. So, just like a book, you're not supposed to judge a beer by its by its can? Never. Never. Because it's a pretty cool looking logo there. It is. I like the design on there, so I'm expecting it to be pretty tasty. So... Spoiler alert, I've had this beer. It is tasty. Now, oh. I'll see if you like it, though, too. So. Cool. I'll put my glass there for you. Exactly. So, Peter, kick us off. We'll give you the honor of yeah. talking about the first topic today on, I think, Feel on Tech. Yeah, you know, so I'm sort of old school, Jason. You are? Well, look at this. I, I still get paper. the Wall Street Journal delivered to my door every that day. That is old school. Well, it is only because uh, I got the digital subscription as a birthday gift, mm -hmm. and with it comes your, your daily uh, paper uh, subscription as well. So I think it's their way of keeping their circulation rates pretty high. Yeah. But anyway, it sits at my doorstep. I'll put it in the recycling pile or sometimes I bring it to work and scan headlines. And right today on the front page. No, wait, you don't sit in your lounge chair with your smoking jacket with a pipe. little cognac and pipe, you know, reading it. I can pull off my best Don Draper if you, you want go. me to do that. But maybe that's for the next edition uh, <laughs> of the video. So um, front page article in what you would probably call the weirdest acquisition ever. Okay. Broadcom, based out of Singapore. Networking. Just a, yep, networking. And no, actually, um, they also produce uh, oh, semiconductor chips. Brocade. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. you're thinking of Brocade, no, not maybe. Broadcom. Don't listen to Singapore-based uh, chip manufacturer, semiconductor manufacturer. Okay. For iPhones, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Yes. Acquired CA Technologies for $19 billion. CA Computer Associates. Correct, yep, okay. CA. Uh, focus more on the mainframe space and been around since the 70s. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a really odd acquisition because Broadcom being more in the hardware, you know, sort of iPhone space yeah. is now branching off into the mainframe enterprise space. It just seems like maybe if you were a car company, you'd be going off and buying a bicycle company. Yeah, why did the article mention why they want to do this? Was well, strategically, how does this help Broadcom? I think it kind of builds off that whole theme. If you've heard Mark Andreessen talk about Software is eating the world. Yeah, I think what Broadcom is looking at personally is that they have to get into the software business. They want that recurring revenue. Okay, it's probably possible that maybe they're seeing some of their semiconductor or chip sales starting to slide, and the best way for them to sort of build up into the enterprise is start to get into the software business. It's just my own well, educated they're, they're guess. They're paying a hefty price. A big price. And actually, related to something that Jan and I talked to before was that. The sales of iPhones was actually decreasing for the first time ever. Right. And so if you've got a manufacturer of chips that utilize that technology, they need to learn stream for revenue and things like that. So interesting. We shall see how it goes, I guess. So a nineteen billion dollar price tag, I certainly hope it goes pretty well for them. I think as of this afternoon their stock was down a little bit over five percent on that news. Broadcom so, or CA? Uh, Broadcom. Okay. CA's was up? CA I did not look at. Okay. I'm not you would expect it to be up, but, right? right? You would expect it to be up. So. Yeah, anyone getting acquired for, for that hefty price, I'm sure it's at a premium. 
Well, congrats to the CA folks, I guess. If you're holding shares, you're going right. to make out. So cheers to you. Yeah, so good luck on working for your new employer. Cheers yeah. to you. Cheers, cheers to you. To Thank you for coming. Computer Associates, great job. Mm, smells good. Really good. Actually, I don't know if you knew this, but Broadcom earlier this year tried to acquire Qualcomm. I heard about that. Another mega chip manufacturer. Uh, and that one got shut down by the U.S. government. Yeah, uh, there's probably got some antitrust, right. monopoly type things going on with that, right? So, so they wised up over that. They ended up moving a headquarters over to San Jose, California. Yeah. So they could kind of get through um, all of the rules and regulations that the U.S. government was going to put on them to acquire CA. So they definitely learned a lot from that initial acquisition target. Agreed. And that Qualcomm acquisition was destined to be the largest technology merger ever. Bigger than the Dell EMC That was um, $67 acquisition. Billion, yeah. I believe. They estimated this one to be north of that. So Ooh. so obviously yeah. Broadcom is, is on the uh, acquisition yeah, trail right wow, now. Yeah. yeah, so they have deep pockets apparently. So I wonder Clearly. who's up next for them as yeah, they continue right. to grow into the software space. Exactly, I agree. CA is up 18% stock today. Stock price is at uh, wow. $44.15, up $6.94. There you go. I'm not a shareholder. I wish I was, but again, cheers to, yeah, uh, cheers to, to CA. Guys. 18% premium. Our fearless producer there with the back end news. Yeah, there. always on top of it. Wow. Thank you, Giovanni. He's a big stock guy, though. He's, he's into all that stuff, you know? All right, so I'm up. So for me, switching gears a little bit, the Emmy nominations came out for TV. Yeah. And obviously a lot of HBO, a lot of Netflix, a lot of, you know, some of the same faces but new faces as well. What I found interesting about this is that for the first time in 17 years, HBO did not get the most nominations, and they were defeated or overcome by Netflix. Wow. So wow. a streaming, strictly pretty much streaming service has taken over from a very traditional powerhouse cable provider to be the top uh, Emmy nomination getter for 2018. So first time in 17 years that HBO has not yeah. held the top spot, which in, in itself is crazy. Yeah. 17 years to hold the top spot there. and That's unprecedented, right? too. So and so interesting Competition's a that. good thing because they're putting out a ton of great content. It right? is, but I mean, I don't really know much about Netflix. I don't have Netflix. So I think oh, you I've, don't? I think I've mentioned this before on the, po if the yeah. podcast, if I haven't. Yeah. yeah, I don't have Netflix. Oh, I have Netflix. I got Amazon Prime. I love all that fresh content, so, all the new stuff that comes out. Do you have HBO? I'm, I'm all over it. Actually, I do not have HBO. See, I have HBO because of Game of Thrones. Oh. But I don't have Netflix. We, we had Netflix back in the day, so I'll share the story. When, like, you get the DVD in the mail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did like, that. But then when they went streaming, we are like, oh, all these streaming shows suck, so why would we keep yeah, it? Yeah, right. And now look what it's become. So um, what would you say is your favorite Netflix show? Do you have a Netflix show that you like the most? No, not necessarily. I, I tend to watch a lot of their documentaries and their, their full-length features. I just mm -hmm. don't have enough time to dedicate to watch. I never can binge watch, you know, 10 episodes in, in one weekend. Mm -hmm. So I tend to watch their um, long form documentaries. And I just actually watched the other night, uh, which I highly recommend because if you're a Wimbledon tennis fan, mm -hmm. it's big time right now. I know everyone's focused on World Cup, but actually Wimbledon is happening as well. Some great matches there. And it inspired me to watch uh, Borg versus McEnroe. Okay. So anyone who's a longtime tennis fan, those guys were the absolute phenoms. They were the Federer and Nadal of, you know, the uh, 70s and 80s. Yep. And, you know, McEnroe just being this defiant, rebellious, uh, new face to the tennis world, taking on um, Bjorn Borg, the Swedish phenom, who, uh, who actually was, th this whole documentary focuses on uh, when he was competing for his fifth consecutive Wimbledon title. So I won't spoil the movie for you, but it was fantastic. Well done. Shia LaBeouf played John McEnroe. And whoever played um, uh, Bjorn, Bjorn Borg, I think a Swedish actor looked identical to him. It might as well have been his brother. Okay. But really an exciting uh, documentary about this particular time in tennis history, which showcased sort of these two very distinct personalities, the stoic uh, Viking in Borg uh, and this crazy rebellious American in McEnroe and how it changed the whole tennis world and the whole tennis landscape, particularly at Wimbledon, which is this very prestigious traditional very, uh, english, bastion right? of yeah english yeah, yeah. tennis history and so i recommend that one okay. if you're looking for something fun to watch during wimbledon week gotcha well it goes there so you had them then you had like uh, agassi and sampras right oh yeah then you know you have Federer and nadal right the, you yeah. know there's always seems to be like 
the stoic guy and the wild guy. You know? Right. So yeah, I totally agree. It's very totally agree. But it makes it interesting to watch and exciting for spectators, but also the players as well. Yep. Speaking of World Cup, though, segue. Congrats to France and Croatia. Yeah, cheers. Playing in the final. That's impressive. On Sunday. Is that both? Is it their first final for both of them? Um, it is Croatia's first final, and the second smallest country ever to make it. I don't. I think France might have been there before, but I'm not sure. See, fast is the new big. Just and like it's in funny the too. So and it's funny too. World. I was rooting for the two other teams, so I wanted Belgium and England to win, and of course, it didn't happen. So. Whoever I pick for the World Cup final, yeah. we won't it, spoil it here. Pick the opposite. Yeah, it's like global NCAA March Madness is what it is. I know, it's crazy. But it's so exciting. I played soccer for 15 years, and so it's great to just see the games yeah. and stuff. And a lot of them are going in extra time, yep. so it's great to have that kind of extra excitement there. So it definitely was awesome to watch. Yeah, so obviously what you've seen a lot in the news lately, on top of World Cup and Wimbledon and a lot of sports news as we start to head into baseball's all-star um, weekend coming up. Yep. Um, it's the whole big news story that I'm sure everybody has seen, but the oh, yeah. uh, the rescue of oh, the yeah. soccer team um, in oh, that yeah. that Thailand the cave in Thailand. I mean, incredible story, but Amazing. one that had some interesting technology angles as well. Yes. In terms of how they were able to digitally map and do recon and understand the space in which they were going to enter the Thai Navy SEAL team mm -hmm. to go rescue these these 14. Um, young players right just absolutely insane the the software they use and of course with every huge um, uh, natural disaster and news story who's on the scene did you know who showed elon up musk. elon musk yes our modern day to tony starks i like to call him <laughs> he is like a tony stark yeah. you're right yeah so for the <laughs> iron man fans out there who doesn't think that elon musk is like our real like a real life, life Tony Stark. He I is. agree. He I showed up with his own specialized submarine, submarine or something, right? Which they ended up not using. No, it was sort of not. a thanks but no thanks. Right. Um, I think he said he was going to leave it there. Too. He did in case they would have some other applicable use for it down the road. Yep. But there he is trying to apply his technology to solve a very specific problem. So yes. I know he's you know getting shamed out in the Twitterverse for that by some people. Yeah, other people, people are, are praising him. Why? I mean, he's. I don't think he's trying to, you know, just grandstand. I think he was trying to legitimately help. He I brought so several of his SpaceX engineers out there yep. to help do some some digital uh, geographic mapping of the space. They use some specialized software too, I believe, from a, uh, a Denver-based company okay. that specializes in mining um, and and sort of deep geological digs, so they can better understand the space that they were having to navigate to save those kids. This crazy race. I think you said to get a person out is going to take like four hours. Yeah. To navigate out, yeah, it's, it's insane. And distance. you're going through these crevices that are like just like wide enough to get through. Yeah. Could, but I wonder, like, first, but I wonder first, like, how the heck did they get in there in the first place? And there's all these crazy crevices. I guess there's another entrance, maybe or something. Maybe, but I think when they got in, uh, the monsoons came later on. Well, right, so it wasn't flooded, right? right? But they had to get to where they were. And if you look at the map of it, it's like all right. these It started turns. to flood, and they were just trying to escape the water. Yeah, that's I think where it comes from. So yes. they just go for like pizza. I yeah, think the yeah. coach wanted to bring him on an adventure. Hey, talk about team bonding. No thanks, man. Those kids will be uh, tight for life. But I think, didn't the kids run off first and the coach went after them? I feel like, I think I read that or heard that. But still, oh, this yeah. coach, amazing dude, former monk. Oh, no way. And he, like, was there and he yep. taught the kids how to meditate. Yep. To, like, stay calm and stuff. Yep. And to help, you know, fight the fact that they were in the dark without any food and fresh water. I mean, they probably could have drank the flood water, I guess. They had to, right, to survive. But, like... Just insane. And the tech, right? You know, they've got they had like this rope that they actually put through the whole yep. thing. They had the guys with the tanks and they had to take the tanks off and roll them and to get through and I mean, Oh, they were using aerial drones. They were using it's uh, insane. Yeah, in these sort of um, interior was, drones, uh, zoom lenses, yeah. thermal cameras to create this sort of three D aerial map of the space. Yeah. And and you can actually go online. MIT technology review. Actually, has a great article out right now okay. that breaks it down to show how they were able to digitally map um, this space that would be really difficult to do right. under any normal circumstances. Exactly. So it just shows you how technology can really save lives in really sort of unknown, unpredictable circumstances. Right. You know, a few years ago, those kids would have been right. Gone. Right. It's incredible. So it today, is. given you know Elon Musk submarines and drones and <laughs> and other types of technology innovations, I mean, they are lucky. To have survived sure. that, and it's an incredible story. And I'm sure there'll be a Netflix movie. There that is. Comes They've out. already said there's going to be a movie. On oh, it. is it going to be on Netflix or HBO? I have no or? idea. It might be a major motion picture. Yeah. Depends who they get. Right. Know? Who would play Elon Musk? You think in the movie? Play himself? 
Oh God, uh, it's, it's got to be um, what's his name? Tony Stark's. Uh, oh, Robert Downey. Robert Jr. Downey Jr. Thank you. <laughs> that would be funny, actually. That would Robert be perfect. Robert Downey Jr. plays Elon Musk in the movie. Yeah, that'd be. That would be another Oscar-winning role for uh, Robert Downey Jr. No Probably. doubt about it. Probably that and Charlie Chaplin. I think you'd have two of them. <laughs> well, hey, cheers to everyone for getting out of that too, because that yeah, is cheers crazy. To, cheers to that team. And it gripped the world. Everyone, like my wife's yep. talking about it. Everyone's watching. You got it. Trump tweeting about it, which some people are like, whatever. But it's crazy. But it did capture the world's uh, support and imagination, and and uh, you know, amazing that they got out. All I alive. agree. So on a lighter subject, last one we'll talk about today: ticket scalping. Have you ever been a victim of ticket scalping? Meaning a victim, meaning that I've scalped tickets and they were counterfeits or they weren't good tickets or they anything, were fake? Anything. You've tried to get you try to get tickets for a show and you get shut out. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Set the oh, alarm, it's, it's 9 difficult. o'clock, it's ticket difficult. master, yep. hit, hit and refresh, you, yeah. get, you get screwed, or the latter, which is more worse. So like, apparently, this happens a lot. I've gotten a shut out from many, many concerts I've tried yeah. to get for myself. To bring my wife to a yeah. show for, a, like, you know, Adele. Couldn't get Adele tickets in Boston when they came because sold out in two minutes, you know. With, and apparently it's because, as you can imagine, a lot of bots out there, a lot of scalping agencies that have created these algorithms yeah. to circumvent the system and, and really get access to all the premium tickets. Then, of course, you go on StubHub. Yeah. And they're twice, three times as much. Oh, and it's, it's out just, of control. It's crazy. So, you know, I haven't been to a good show in a long time because of that. And I remember... Back in the day, like Red Sox, you know, 2004, trying to get tickets, right? And they had the lottery where you go in the waiting room. That was yep. the first kind of instantiation of trying to get around these bots. Right. And you get shut out there, too. So apparently they're trying to do some new things there with that as well. So I found this article, and apparently there is a new app called Dice. Okay. Which launched in 2014. Yeah. And essentially what happens is, is that... For certain um, places, it's not it's not kind of worldwide yet. But essentially, what happens is, you when you get your ticket, your ticket is in the Dice app, and it's a QR code, and it's non-transferable. You can't take a screenshot of it and send it off. You can't like transfer it through email or anything like that. Yeah. So, and they're trying to do that to crack down on these scalpers, right? right? So it's a very interesting concept, and apparently it's. Do you have the app? Have you downloaded the app? I do not. I just saw it today. Okay, you just learned about it on here, but the ticket lives in there, and essentially it locks that ticket to the phone. Now, if you uh, could, you know, get a bunch of burner phones maybe and sell those out as a scalp, but that's obviously a lot more work instead of just getting the e-ticket and you know printing it out and sending it or just sending the email, right? So interesting to do that. And another thing they said too is that Ticketmaster has come up with this thing called Verified Fan. Yeah, I just recently did that. Did you? And it was very successful for me. Yeah, for what show? Uh, Hamilton. Nice. Hamilton, the uh, musical, is In coming Boston. to Boston. Yes. yes. And so I signed up for Verified Fan yep. uh, through Ticketmaster, which is part of Live Nation. Yep. And uh, luckily... Customer of Actifia, by the way. Yep, great customer. Yep. Uh, doing some really innovative things, actually. We'll talk about that another on another episode. <laughs> uh, but as it relates to being a customer of theirs, um, I signed up for Verified Fan and was lucky enough to be selected through their random lottery. Yep. Went online and hit the bid and was able to get good tickets to uh, one of the Hamilton shows coming later this fall. Nice. So, Jay got tickets too because I heard him on the phone yeah, talking so, about it. Okay, so he got lucky doing that. Okay, exactly. Jay, if you're still watching, good for you. Maybe we'll be at the same Hamilton hey, you show. you got to go pregame before yeah. that. A couple yeah, of exactly. Beers. Is there crazy. such thing as a Hamilton tailgate? Do we dress up in powdered wigs? And, can invent one. Okay. Start rapping. Yeah. <laughs> well, as I mentioned before, Jason, I am old school as it relates to tickets, even though I did sign up for Verified. Oh, uh, yeah? There is the old school way of just waiting in line at yeah. the venue. True. And believe it or not, there was a former AT&T account rep who got laid off in New York City about a year or two ago and said, how am I going to make money now? I'm going to be entrepreneurial. i got to figure out a way to start a business. And he came up with the most ingenious idea, which is standing right in front of us. The ability to stand in line. He's the Uber of standing in line. Oh, he's like a mule. A beer so, mule. No, yeah, so I can hire you Tickets. to stand in line for whatever it is. Let's call it $20 an hour. I don't mm-hmm. know what his rates are. It probably depends on the line, the show, the ticket right. value. And he, he'll wait in line to get an iPhone. He'll wait in line for tickets. He'll wait in line. Oh, there was a story where these cronuts were the hottest thing in New York City. He'll wait <laughs> in line for a cronut. Yeah. yeah, I remember the, the cronut face, which is a croissant and a donut yeah. combined. Yeah, yeah. He'll wait in line for that yeah. for a hundred bucks and deliver it to your your apartment or your workplace, and so I thought that was sort of an old school ingenious way of solving this particular bot problem. It is uh, and getting around the scalpers, 
But again, you're paying a premium to have someone wait in line, but it is another unique way of solving that problem. So I know he's got an app uh, that you can use if you want someone to stand in line for you. That's pretty cool. There's a similar thing in the beer world. Obviously, we, we drink a lot of craft beer where people will stand in line and, yeah. and get you a four pack of this beer for like a $10 charge. And they call that like a muling fee. Oh, got it. Okay. And they have what a weird thing. Well, not weird, but kind of ingenious thing is that in Los Angeles and in New York City, yeah. there's two breweries called Monkish and Other Half. Monkish is in, in LA and Other Half is in Brooklyn. Sure. Where there's a lot of homeless people in the area. The homeless people will go stand in line for people, hold their spots. To get paid. And they'll pay them. People will pay them with food or with money or whatever it may be to have these people that are just there hanging out reserve their spots. Very entrepreneurial. And some of them actually get the beer and then they sell it for a premium on the yeah, street. Right, right, there you it go. sells out. Yeah. So another ingenious way to try and get around the system. Now, Jay just hit me up here on, on, on Messenger. He did not end up getting handled tickets. He won the lottery. Oh, he didn't get he them. he couldn't get tickets. You're kidding. So, so there you go. Even so, though he was a verified fan oh. and got through, he still got shut out. See, it still so it may not work. So now they have all his information, they have his credit card, so now he's a verified fan. Right. So I guess I was lucky. Time. I guess I was lucky. I just hit, I swung at the first pitch. Yeah. And I got four tickets to yes. a show, a date that I wanted. So sorry about that, Jay. I'll let you know how the show goes. But I'm sure you can <laughs> buy it on the aftermarket. You could. On StubHub yeah. or Ace Tickets or any of those local sites. Jay is driving his fancy new S5. You probably can spend a little money on some tickets. Okay, hey, no new tires this year, Jay. You'll get tickets <laughs> to Hamilton instead. <laughs> I can't wait for the message to be here. <laughs> cool. So, thoughts on the beer? You like it? I what really like it a lot. Yeah. Because it being a nice, beautiful, hot summer day here in Boston, uh-huh. I find it to be really refreshing, tasty. Do I say hydrating? You beer can say is, that. Yeah, I think it, it it's tastes. It's wet. It's water. Yeah. I mean, it tastes like something that I would drink on a nice hot summer so day. Here's the interesting thing. And enjoy a nice conversation and have a good time the interesting thing this is a double IPA at 7.8% alcohol so even though it's a kind of a heavier beer in that sense it does very have a light light taste to it, it you know what I mean it's light, a little bit almost, of a light color a little citrusy almost yeah well it should be that's what it's supposed to be so right. well there you go my taste buds are tuned in to be a really demanding uh, this is beer drinker I think Gio and I have taught you well yeah, you have. You have. <laughs> when you awesome. work next to this guy long enough, you will have, through osmosis, learn enough about beer and how beer is made and where beer comes from <laughs> than anybody else. Hey, you know, I'm a married guy. I got two young kids. I have a lot of hobbies. So this is an easy it's one. It's a great one. Up, so. It's a great one. There Thank you go. for sharing it with me. No worries. Thank you for coming on. So that wraps it up for this week's Activity on Tech. Peter, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. No worries. Always fun. And we'll be back next week with a new special guest. In that meantime, see you guys later. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Adios.